I am Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. In the previous lectures of the programming of the graph, we have uh, implemented the BFS, DFS, Prims, and uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, and the floyd Warshall algorithm for all the shortest path. We also have implemented the cycle detection algorithm and uh, number of connected components and the number of elements in each of the connected components. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the transitive closure method or finding out the transitive closure for the given graph. Let's look at the scenario and try to understand what the transitive closure is. So let's say we have a graph Let's say we have a graph like this. In this graph, you can see that you can reach from A to B directly. You can reach from B to C directly. You can reach from C to D directly. If I uh, extend this graph further, let's say this one, and let's say we have another edge from B to A. Now, there is no direct uh, path from A to D. But yes, by via B and C, you can reach to D. So the transitive closure suggests that if at all there is a path between a pair of the vertex, then that will be represented by the direct edge. So the transitive closure is also a kind of the graph which represents or which uh, represents all kinds of the path by the direct edge. For example, if I have the edge from A to B, so it is there. If H from B to C, this is there, C to D, this is there, D to B, this is there, B to A, this is there. This is also the original graph. But I have the path from A to C via B, so I will represent that by the edge. And similarly, if I have a path from A to D, that will be represented by the direct edge. I can reach from C to B also via D, C to D and then D to B. So that will also be represented by the direct edge. So the transitive closure method is suggesting that uh, I have. I can represent this uh, graph by the adjacency matrix. So let me make the adjacency matrix first. So I have the A to A entry is zero, A to B entry is one, and no other entry will be positive in, or from B. From B, we have two edges, B to A, that is one, and then B to C, that is one. All other entry was zero. Similarly, from C to D, we have an edge. All other entries will be zero for C. From D to B, we have an edge. So this entry will be one, all other entries will be zero. So this is the adjacency matrix of the graph. And what I'll do, I will convert this to the adjacency list by the floyd Warshall algorithm. So the Warshall algorithm suggests that you take every vertex as a mediator once. And then you check for all the entries in the adjacency matrix if the path can be reached via that uh, mediator vertex. And earlier that was uh, that entry was uh, zero, then you can update that entry as one. Well. So let me write like this. So I'm taking each of the vertex as a mediator at one point in time. So let's say this A is represented by zero. This is one, this is two, and this is three. So we have converted the A, B, C, D in the form of zero, one, two, three. So for k equals to 0 to n minus 1, 2, because we have n vertices, let's say, for each k, I'll look for all the entries in the adjacency matrix. So for j equals to 0 to n minus 1, 2, what I'm looking at, at a i j entry in the adjacency matrix. Let's say the name of the matrix is a. And then I have to see if ij path directly is minimum or if I go from i to k and there is a path and there is a edge from k to j and there is a path. If both the paths are existing, then I can say that the path exists from i to j. So either this path means direct path i to j is minimum or the path is possible via this k.
So these are the two signs that you this is representing as or and this is representing as and. Fine. So if we have a path directly, then this entry will be effective. If there is no path directly, if there is no path directly, then it may be possible that the path is possible via a vertex. So this is the formula and this is the Warshall algorithm for the transitive closure. So now let's write this in the form of the code. So we already have written a code for uh, this uh, Floyd Warshall algorithm. Let's take some of the parts of this in our new program. So this is this was the program for all pair shortest path. I'm converting this to the transitive program. Let's save this file as transitive closer dot. CPP, and we only need the adjacency matrix here. So I'll ask the user to input the number of the vertices, and then I will take the adjacency matrix as the input. Okay, so let's say the adjacency matrix can be represented as A, I, J. So with the help of the two nested loops, I can get an input of the adjacency matrix. Fine. After taking the input of the adjacency matrix, I will apply the Warshall fire Warshall algorithm. What it says that you have to take each of the vertex as a, a mediator one point in time, and then you will have to look for all the entries in the table for the selected mediator vertex. So we have uh, the adjacency matrix A and the entries of the adjacency matrix can be updated like this. Either the path, either the directly, this path is uh, mean, uh, possible from I to J or so you can represent or like this or the path is possible via a K mediator vertex. So you can apply the AND here. You can also apply the bitwise uh, and an OR operator, but the logical OR operators and the AND operators are sufficient here because we are only dealing with the true and the false values. Okay, so whatever is the entry that can be updated in the adjacency matrix. And finally, the adjacency matrix can be rendered. Okay, so let's test this algorithm. Uh, Let's test if this has some errors. Yes, obviously we will have uh, to take the adjacency or declare the adjacency matrix. So adjacency matrix will be of size n cross n. So this has completed uh, the graph series for the basics of the graph. In subsequent lectures, we will discuss about the problems uh, which are available at the HackerRank platform, LeetCode, and the CodeShift platforms related to the graphs. Thank you.